Hello, everyone. Delighted to be able to join you again for some time in God's Word together. And uh, I want to talk about a prayer, but before I get into prayer as our devotion, I want to talk about 40 days of prayer, which our staff and our prayer team and our life group leaders and even some of you have already joined into it. But on Sunday, we started a 40-day period of time, and I want to invite all of you to be a part of it, where we pray uh, for the next 40 days over some key things. We'll list the items on our website, so you can go there for some of the detail. Uh, but I also want you to learn about prayer as we do this. You know, some things you learn better as you do them. You don't just sit in the classroom and study. You, you learn by doing, and that's what I want us to do. I want us to learn some things about prayer while we're praying. And so be a part of the 40 days of prayer. God's going to use it. Um, I want to take you, though, to uh, Mark chapter 14. And I want us to learn something that I think is a foundation to prayer because it's actually something that Jesus did in his darkest hour that I want you to see today. This is um, Mark 14, verse 32 and following. It says, uh, then they went to the olive grove called Gethsemane. Jesus said, sit here while I go to pray. So all the disciples went but then he took three of them to go in further. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and he became deeply troubled and distressed, and he told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and watch with me. So he's asked three of them to come on a little bit further. He's asking them to pray with him, telling him how burdened and weighed down he feels. And then it says this, verse 35, he went on a little further and he fell onto the ground he prayed that if it were possible, this awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. Verse 36, he, he, this is in quotes, he's now praying, Abba, Father, he cried out, everything is possible to you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. And then many of you know this, but if you don't, this is key. Yet, I want your will to be done, not mine. That final sentence says a lot of things to us. Number one, it tells us how important prayer is. I mean, think about this. If Jesus is praying, how much more do we need to pray? So we're going to learn how valuable prayer is. Uh, prayer is personal. So Jesus is not trying to align himself with the universe. You know, sometimes you hear people talk about this and the universe is impersonal. The universe doesn't have power to give you uh, a will for your life. And so he's not praying to the universe. He's praying to his father who he describes as Abba Father. Um, Abba is Aramaic for a very personal, endearing term. It's a term of affection. It's a term of trust and confidence. And so he's praying to his Father, but he's also praying his most deep, uh, deeply held issues in, you know, in his own heart at that given moment. It's like, it's not just about world issues. It's about what he was dealing with. And then it's powerful, because if you think about this, the salvation that was finalized on the cross really didn't begin on the cross, it began in the garden. What Jesus does here in the garden by surrendering his will to his Father is part of what secured our salvation. There is no, um, it is finished on the cross until not my will but yours be done in the garden. These two things go together. Work that God wants to do in and through your life comes out of a posture of surrender before God. And so that's the other word I want to give you too. This line also tells us something about posture. Not so much physical, although you can kneel in prayer, you can stand in prayer, um, you can lay prostrate before God in prayer. I mean, posture can be meaningful at times, but this is more about the posture of your heart, the surrendering of your will to God, just as Jesus even taught in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done. This is what he modeled. This is what he taught. This is what he did. He surrendered his will to the Father. If you missed my message on Sunday, uh, go back and listen to it because uh, I talked a little bit about this, the wrestling match that we often have with our will and God's, that the walk with God is not always a walk. Sometimes it's a wrestling match. And I illustrated it through a poem that you know, many of you know about called Footprints. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good poem. It probably means some significant things that are true. But it illustrates um, this reality that there's two sets of footprints in the sand. And then when life got hard, there's only one set of footprints. And the author is complaining to God that God abandoned him in his worst hour. And then the revelation comes that 
you know, Jesus was carrying him during his hard hour. Well, my premise is that before there was one set of footprints in the sand, there was one set of footprints in two ruts as Jesus was dragging us, kicking and screaming. I think there's a time where when we're wrestling with God, God's so committed to him getting us to a destination that he will push us, he will, he will do whatever he can to move us in the direction that he wants. And so I think there's a prequel to the Footprints poem, and that's the Kicking and Screaming poem. And until you learn to eventually surrender your will to God, that that's the better version, you really don't get the power that there is out of prayer. You just make prayer about your agenda rather than it being about God's agenda. And what Jesus really taught is the power that comes out of prayer comes out of the posture of surrender. Really, there's, there's few times in our lives where we would ever say victory comes out of surrender. But it happens that way in the kingdom of God. It happens that way as we begin to take on a 40-day period of time and say, Lord, we want to see you do some important things in our lives, important things in our church, important things in our family, important things in our world. Let's start first with God's agenda. And let's start first even with our own heart. You know what? This prayer today can be as simple as saying, Lord, um, I got some needs and I'm going to pray about my needs, but I want to start with your agenda. Lord, in all this confusion, I want to get your clarity, but I want to start with your agenda. And I want to do that with a surrendered heart. So join me in that, and then let's continue to come back throughout the week, learn more about prayer, prayer and pray together. So Jesus, we surrender ourselves to you. If you're listening to me today and you've never done this, this is, this is the beginning of salvation, where we simply say, Jesus, come into my life and forgive me. I surrender to you. Be my Savior and be my Lord. And then that's not a one and done. That's the rest of our lives. We just keep getting up and saying, Jesus, today, again, with all the needs that I have, all the concerns that I have, weight that I carry, Lord, I want your will, not mine. I want my heart to be in line with your will and your kingdom and your ways. And as I do that, Jesus, pour out the resources of heaven onto this surrendered person. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God's going to honor that. God's going to use that. Let's keep praying together.